This is a really versatile single cell toolkit that can do a bunch of different things. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do dimensionality reduction, data set integration, and differential expression. This is in Python, so just go ahead and open up a Jupyter Notebook. These are the dependencies we'll need to install, and I've already installed them into my Conda environment, so I can just go ahead and import them. And for this tutorial, I have three different samples, lung1, lung2, and lung3. So I'm going to use ScanP to load these in as A data objects. And these are 10x H5 output files, which for some reason have the issue of having duplicate gene names. So we need to call var name make unique. And then we can load these in. And if we look at one of these objects, it has 12,000 cells. Each of them have roughly that many cells. But all we want to do now is combine them into one object. So we'll use the scanP concatenate function and we'll make a new A data object. And we're going to call the batch sample. And now if we look at that object, if we look at the observation data frame, we added this sample column. So long one got zero, so on to long three, which got two. We now have an unintegrated but combined A data object with 34,000 cells. And now we're just going to apply a few basic ScanP pre-processing steps. First, we're going to filter cells that have fewer than 200 genes. And then we're going to filter genes that are only in three or fewer cells. And then we're going to annotate mitochondrial genes and calculate the percent of mitochondrial counts in every cell. So basically, we're just annotating every gene that starts with MT. In this case, I have mouse data, and it's lowercase, but it may be uppercase in your data set, so just double check this. Annotated those, and then I ran this calculate QC metrics, which adds a new column in the observation data frame. Let me just show that real quick. So it added this percent counts mitochondrial column along with some of these other data too. But I'm just filtering anything that's above 15%. So after this filtering, we started with 34,000 and now we have 32, almost 33,000 cells. So we filtered the cells, but we haven't normalized or done anything yet. Before we do any of that, we have to save the raw counts data to a new layer in the A data object so that it doesn't get changed or messed with at all. So now we've frozen the counts inside a layer called counts in the A data object. This is what SCVI is going to use, and we're not going to change this at all anymore. But now let's take the data and normalize it. So we're normalizing every cell to 10,000 counts. Then we're going to change it to a log scale. And then we're going to save the raw data because a lot of different ScanP functions and tools use the raw data. You don't technically need to do this for SCVI though. And now, we're going to calculate the highly variable genes. So I'm picking 3000 here. You can do more. SEVI recommends anywhere from, I think, 1000 to 10,000, but you don't want to have more than the number of cells you have. And the more genes you have here, the longer it's going to take to train the model. Okay, two things here. Again, we're pointing at that layer we made earlier, and we're passing batch key sample. If you only had one sample, you wouldn't use this here. Okay, now we can set up the SCVI model. So we call this setup and data function.
So we pass the a data object and then we point to the counts layer we made. And then this is where the batch again comes in or your multiple samples. So we're passing the sample as the categorical key. And then for the continuous covariate key, so what variables do we want to account for? So we're going to do percent mitochondrial. And then we can also do total counts. And likewise, you could pass more than just sample if you had more than just sample or like technology if you had data from different sequencing technologies. And now we can initialize our model. We're just going to call it model. We're just going to pass a data. And this had all the default settings. You could change the layers and stuff, but I'm not going to do that here. But if we look at it, See, it gives you the different layer information and whatnot. And of course, we haven't trained it. We'll do that in a second. And we do that with model.train. And I have a GPU. If you don't have a GPU, it might only use an NVIDIA GPU. Then it's going to default to CPU, and this could take a while. Even in my case, with the GPU, it's probably going to take somewhere around like five or six minutes. And now that we have this trained model, we can do a lot of different things with it. First, I'm going to extract the latent representation of the data now. And all this is, is a NumPy array, which is the length of your data set, so 32,000 cells. And now we're going to save this latent array to the A data object. And we're also going to save the SCVI normalized expression values to the A data object. So now we have these normalized values in a new layer as well. But anyway, now that we have these, let's do the normal clustering associated with single cell data analysis. So let's compute the neighbors. Importantly, we have to pass this argument here, which is use rep, and we have to point at this X SCVI layer that we made here. And this is really the only difference from regular clustering. But then we can do the UMAP and latent algorithms as well. Now let's plot these U maps. I'm just going to show the clusters and then I'm going to show the three different samples. Actually, before I do that, let me just show you. So Leyden just got saved as a new column. And of course, sample was what we had from before. So we have 19 different clusters. And then we have what appears to be good overlap between these three different samples. They're all lung data, but one and two were stimulated. So you would expect some differences like we see. And then let me just show you how to use the normalized expression layer in typical ScanP plotting functions. So I'm just going to pass a gene name instead. And then we have to pass layer which is just going to be that SCVI normalized layer we made earlier. And that's how we can use the normalized counts. And you can use that in other plotting functions as well. And if we get rid of this, of course, it uses the default ScanP normalized values. All right, let me show you how to use SCVI to find the cluster markers. So we're going to make a data frame by calling the model differential expression. And we're just going to group by the latent clusters. And now we have this panda data frame, which you can filter by group one, which is the latent cluster number. And you have all these different differential expression results like the log fold change, probabilities, etc. 
Let me just very quickly show you how to graph this. So I'm just making a dictionary of the top two values for every cluster in this data frame. Again, group one is the cluster. So we look at markers. Now we see just an entry for each cluster and then the top two marker genes. And then we can use the scan p dot plot or another function with these genes to visualize them. So now we have the dot plot of the top two marker genes for each cluster. And now let's say we wanted to do differential expression between long one and long two. And now this is almost like pseudo-bulk between long one and long two. And then finally, let me just show you how you can specify to do differential expression between any two groups of cells. Again, we'll call model differential expression. But now we need to pass ID X one. So here we need to pass an array of Boolean. So true or false values. And so for every true it passes, it's going to extract that cell. So let's do differential expression between long one cluster one and long two cluster one. Again, long one is batch zero or sample zero. So if we look at this real quick, oops. Ah, I didn't mean to run that. If we look at this real quick, we see it's just a list of true and false. Here I probably just ran this versus everything else, but I want to run this versus IDX2. The same cluster one, but let's do long two. So now we have the differentially expressed genes from this subset of cells between long one and long two. So this is just a basic introduction into a few of the SCVI functionalities. I'm going to show some more SCVI tutorials in the future, such as automatic cell labeling and cell deduplication.